How about now? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> All right, we'll start. We'll start again. We'll start from scratch. Apparently, the uh, the microphone was having a bit of a glitch, but looks like we're good now. So yeah, like I was saying, I've gotten up at 5:30, 5:30 in the morning. So no wonder the technology is not awake yet either. I was saying good morning to everyone. Jeremy, thumbs up. Like I mentioned, you're always doing that, so nice. Evelyn, Stony Stones, Stevens back. Ah, uh, wow, now it's cruising along. Yep, that's better. Alright, I'm seeing a lot of the regular names here, so that's good. Now, let's readdress the two comments that were here before I even started. So, Crazy Zach. He was just saying that he feels like eBay is far too curated, and I, I tend to agree. It's it did say it's new to Opal, which I don't think it really is, because I know Opal's been on there for three years plus. Well, even further than that, at least five years plus when I was looking. I've been using eBay since I was a kid, but not just for Opal. Um, but yeah, he says a lot of scrap stuff, and probably not wrong. There are a lot of chip sellers selling cuttables, or at least there were. But I'm not too sure now. Uh, Cooks Opals. Too many people can create listings. Really, anyone can create a listing. I've seen stuff listed as Opal that isn't even Opal, so it is what it is. Very little oversight. I would go so far as to say no oversight. Even when I report things, sometimes nothing happens. So, oh, good morning, Nancy. Dimmy would be cold this time of this time of year. But all right. Now that we've readdressed all of that and the audio is actually working, we will cruise on. So I've got eBay open here and we'll just go through some basic search terms. So we will start off with just Opal Rough. That's what we're always shopping for. So straight away in this first, yeah you can see the cursor, in this first picture I'm a little bit concerned that I can see tweezers and the tweezers are looking huge. So and it, it's it's great when a seller puts a ruler in a picture, but when the ruler's just in the tiny tiny corner, I mean I would just assume that these are millimeters and you it's all right. At least it gives you something. Some sellers won't even do that. But I'm trying to look at the contrast here and it's and it's clearly bumped up a little bit. Maybe even a lot. So I'm looking a lot at the sharpness of the image as well as the colour contrast between background and colour. And that halo effect that you're seeing there along that edge. So this wouldn't be one that I would be overly keen on buying myself just because I'd like a bit more of a zoomed out overview of it. At least they are showing that there's a fair bit of sand. I'm seeing little bubbles there too, so this is clearly shot with these opals sitting underwater. Just there you can see some air bubbles. All little things to keep an eye on. I mean this seller's got the name and everything in the pictures, so they might actually take this quite seriously. Um, yeah, so pretty similar, pretty similar way of setting up all of their, all of their listings for rough. Okay. At least the prices aren't that bad. Yeah, the prices are nice and realistic, so that's a pleasant surprise already. That guy's okay, I vouch for this seller. Oh, that's right, you sent me the messages earlier, yeah. So, you've done a bit of shopping on eBay recently and it's been hit and miss, but no, this, I mean, the pictures might be enhanced a little bit, but all in all, at least the pricing isn't. I've seen things like this priced for incredible, incredible numbers. Oh, here we go. So, just a whole heap of Cuba PD Potch, 200 grams, keeping up with comments. Oh, John Cook, Cook's Opals. Right, yep. I know who you are now. 
There was a lot of scrap on eBay, but damn, you can find some good stuff. Well, let's see if I find any. I uh, I should mention that if I find anything good, just give me a day to purchase purchase it in case in case I really want to. I mean, it's an auction, so there's only been one bid, which should just be the minimum. So, I mean, for Poch No Colour, 11 bucks, I wouldn't be too upset about that. That's fine. Oh, see, this seller must absolutely dominate. Dominate eBay at the moment. Which means they'd probably be one of the good ones. Chip jar. That looks like a different seller as well. Let's check out this chip jar. So, alright, you can buy them in multiples. So, 6 available, 14 sold. What do they say? Medium, medium rough opal chip jar. Alright, must be a medium sized jar. Because I don't know what a medium chip would be. I mean, it's just exactly what it is, a chip jar. I'm not quite sure what the size of it is, apart from medium. Alright, so three by three and a half by three. Don't have a ruler. Um so it's inch and a half. Yeah, so I've seen some of these bottles at uni. So it's quite a small small bottle for forty five bucks. But they are some nice looking chips. And the seller is, oh, Young Guns Opal. The Young Guns. If anyone's not familiar with the Young Guns, they're on um, Outback Opal Hunters. I've actually come, ac I've come across their store in the past just because I was chatting to them through, well, through YouTube. They've got a good YouTube channel. They're, I don't know who does their filming, whether those boys do it themselves, but they're actually really good, really entertaining, high quality. So check them out on YouTube if you haven't already. But these guys might have some good stuff. Because these guys do know... Alright, so they don't have a lot of lift listings at the moment. But if we just look at one of their Opal Roughs. The Opal Pay Dirt. So just back here, the Opal Pay Dirt is the one that I was looking at a while ago. When they mentioned it to me. I mean, see, there you can actually see... See the ruler creep in. This is this is nice. See these boys these boys know what they're doing. You can see that the background here, they haven't tweaked the contrast so hard that it goes black, like pitch black, even though the container the backing container is actually like a off kind of grey blue. So they they haven't enhanced so this is some nice opal. And I mean it's an auction, so the price isn't even set by them. I mean, it'll go for more than this with a day and 12 hours left to go. But that's some, yeah, some nice Cooper PD. And the price, it'll be whatever people decide that it's worth to them. So, can't knock them for that. But they've taken their pictures well, so I'm happy with that. That's good. I expect nothing less from the young guns. Um... Do -do 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 -do. Looks tiny for 45, yeah. I mean, opal chips are always a bit like that. No, I don't, I don't mind that. That's that's some good stuff. And, oh, okay, so this was the Young Guns as well. So that one was a Young Guns one. Ooh. Balderuff. Everyone knows how much of a fan I am of the Boulder Opal. So, I'll, this is interesting because I rarely ever see it with inch measurements. Is this a Australian seller? Yeah, Queensland. Is that inches? Yeah, it's definitely inches. Alright. Aussie seller using an inch ruler. That's interesting. At least it's something. It shows you how big it is. Shots like this are also pretty good if you've got the fingers because you can kind of estimate what people's finger size is. It's not the best, it's not as good as a ruler, but 
I don't mind it. And yeah, it's another auction, so the price is whatever the price is going to be. It's a nice little stone, though. Is this the same seller? Kimber Stones, the Intruder again. Little Yao or not? What other? That would be the same seller. So, I mean, we've looked through quite a few listings, and really, have we seen any more than three sellers so far? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. Beautiful example. I was hoping I would come across something like this. So, triple A quality, top of the top, natural opal gemstone rough, 10 pieces. Triple A Ethiopian Opal Raw. And what I would say from this picture is that it is absolutely blown up. Like these. This isn't just an enhanced, this is a saturation maxed out, contrast basically maxed out. I can tell from this little background halo effect. So in the center here. If you play with cameras and opals long enough, you'll be able to see a lot of this. But you can see the darker regions compared to the lighter regions. And the shape of the colour play and everything is just... Yeah. And the fact that the opals become this... This one just here in the corner. This blue, blue base kind of thing. That's just from absolutely bumping it. So... Yeah, they really wanted to pump some colour into these after the fact which is sad because i'm sure this stuff has some nice color in it if you just take a photo without really over overdoing it like you can tune it up just to make it look like it's in focus and everything but as soon as you start affecting the color you're just going to get this delivered to you and there's just going to be negative feedback and it'll just tank your score so i'm not overly keen on this listing And yeah, I'm sure if I looked at the feedback, there'd be people just saying, not like pictured, which is, uh, yeah, not great. I wouldn't call it photoshopping, I'd call it more just enhancing. So just contrast, tweaking and stuff. You don't need Photoshop to do any of that. You can even do it with your camera. I can set this camera up here to produce pictures like that. Just by abusing the settings like you would not believe. Which is just not the aim not the aim of when you're trying to sell otherwise you're just going to get negative feedback and that hurts on the internet these days unless you can delete it like on facebook okay i mean the rule is in there i'd assume millimeters yeah i don't have a lot to say about this one it's an auction so they haven't set the price and it's just going to go for whatever Bit of a gamble lightning ridge piece, yeah. Lightning ridge. Still got 12 hours left. People aren't getting carried away on the bidding. Bit of sand, bit of potch. But some potential blue there, which is always good. I, I actually like when the opals have very little description. I like the pictures to do the talking for them, so... Oh, this could be a nice piece. Oh, so coins, I don't know what you guys think about coins, but I'm not a huge fan. Like, I know what a five cent coin looks like, but sometimes people will put like a, a, a coin that I don't even recognise. A lot of the time, a penny or something, and I kind of know what a penny is, but yeah, it's I would much rather a ruler than a uh, coin of any currency. Like, even an Australian 5 cent, I still have to look around. It's actually getting harder to find 5 cent coins these days. I don't see them very often. I can't remember the last time I did see them, except for some in my collection of coins. But it doesn't really fill me with confidence straight away, like a ruler would. So it's a, it's a quite a small, quite a small stone. 65 carat. It must be chunky too. Don't get a side-on picture or anything. I don't know why. It's like a photo... 
I don't know, under sunlight maybe, and then under whatever pink disco party they went to later that night. Photos during a rave? I'm not sure about that. But so far no bids. For $30, I probably wouldn't bid on it either. But if it was like a no reserve starting at just a couple bucks, I'd chuck something in for that. Just because it does have a cool pattern on it. That could look nice flattened out and polished. Can't quite tell if it's overly sandy or not. No, uh, it might be a little bit soft in some of those spots. Uh, that's a seller I already think we've looked at. Cool. Mintipi. Poch. Three ounces, 85. Yeah, I guess that's not so bad. Keeping up with comments. Some people like coins for scale question mark. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I don't I don't know if anyone really likes coins that much. It's great. Opal Fever Mate is great on eBay for the UK. Oh, video. We haven't actually seen any any listings with a video under just the Opal search term yet. It's just been a few few different pictures. Opal chips jar, thirty bucks. Uh, Lightning Ridge Chips. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have much of an opinion on Opal Chips jars. You can actually pull them all out and use them as inlay material. And people produce some great stuff with it. But, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not a buyer of Chips jars very often, if at all. This looks like it might be a different seller. Got the tape measure in the back. Don't measure works. Aussie Opals. There seems to be a lot of Opal sellers that don't have a lot of feedback. So maybe some new people getting into it. Maybe some miners finally getting on, on board with the internet selling side of things. There's a lot that really can't be asked with it. Um, ruler is best. Yeah. Don't like coins. Fair enough. That's a bit of shell there. Cooper PD practice. I mean, it's got a nothing reserve. That's a fine practice practice bit. I'd like to even when I if I were to sell Opal and I was selling practice beginners stuff, I'd still make sure there's a few stones in there with at least just some half decent blue in crystal, kinda like this shell here. Just because once you've practiced a few real duds it is nice to take that step towards color i mean here there's a smattering oh that piece in the bottom bottom there with that purple bar is not too bad that's one in this parcel that i'd save for later and then oh that black might even that dark one might even have something in it oh this is a good i reckon this is good for a beginner good beginner's parcel and for a dollar you can just chuck a bid in. That's what I used to do. I used to look at things that had no bids and were just a dollar or two and just put in a minimum. Don't cry if it doesn't win. Just chuck it in and leave it there. Always hunting a bargain. And speaking of bargain, I mean, there's not a lot of colour in here, but there's some nice patterns. I like this one in the corner. 11.50, ah, oh, yeah, so it's an auction. Auction, can't really comment on pricing then. Have a look at this seller. JM Opal, see, again, another 142, pretty low, low count. <laughs> New without tags, natural Opal. Fair enough, fair enough. 60 carats, got a ruler. Oh boy, 60 carats got a ruler, and then I saw this picture and thought, wow, they are small bits. Half a centimetre, five mil, and then you see them like this, and it basically is a bit of a bit of a chip jar without the without the jar. Oh yeah, it does say opal chip, 60 carats. So that's yeah, that's fair. I'm just not reading properly. Too early. Turn on the eyes. I mean, in terms of the photo, it's not 
It's not that bad. To lay out a chips jar like this, that takes a bit of effort. They've actually laid it out nicely. You can see every chip, which is quite cool. You could even count it to count it to have a bit of an estimate there as well. It's an interesting way to sell chips, but at least you can't complain that you didn't know what you were getting. Grain crystal. Yeah. I reckon this seller will do do well. I wonder if they do anything other than chips. Or whether they're a cutter just kind of keeping a lot. Oh, they've got some cut stones as well. Let's have a look at a cut stone. Yeah, not badly shaped. Looks pretty good. Lightning Ridge, one carat, so they're selling it like a hundred and what, 150 bucks or so per carat for that stone. That's probably quite reasonable. Oh, this has caught my eye. Check out ending soonest. Yeah, I'm gonna go to actually sold. This is, this is an opal. <laughs> Anyone see it? anything wrong with this opal here yeah oh at least they say synthetic black opal I was thinking they weren't gonna say it because they've got black fire opal up here nothing to do with synthetic lab grown none of that but I mean I'm hoping everyone can see that this one would be this one would be a this looks plastic a bit yeah synthetic yeah Lab created. Beautiful. You're all you're all on it. You are all well on it. Must mean that there's a bit of a delay in the stream. Cause yeah, alright. I'm happy to know that you guys aren't being fooled by something like this, because that's oh that's as synthetic as it gets. Actually I've got a stream open here so I can Oh yeah, it's it's like minutes behind. Alright. We will slow down when it comes to racing through some of these then so yeah good you guys know your synthetics quite well spotted it straight away perfect yeah perfect um little beads oh that's a pricey one but I don't know, beads are an interesting one to me because the amount of work that it goes into putting together all of the beads, or well, carving up the beads, I mean, I know there's some machines and stuff that help out, but they sell, they sell beads like this for next to nothing on some other sites. This is quite expensive in comparison to most others. And yeah, I'm always amazed at the price they can offload it, but there's probably a lot of reasons behind how they can offer it so cheap in some places of the world. Let's go to sold listings. Let's see what people are buying. If I can find it. Bear with me. Isn't it under here? It used to be. Accepted. Accepts offers. Um... I know I've seen it. Da -da -da -da. All right, this site has changed more than I had expected because completed items apply. Opal Rough, what sold and how much for? Oh, this is nice. So they've got a square on it. Sixty-five bucks, three ounces of cutting room rubs, snips, and chips. So just basically the offcuts. Lightning Ridge, Minty Bee, Cooper, Petey, and All right, just. Every opal field there is. Though the 
material in the bag doesn't really look like it does cover all of those. Eh. Sold for 65 bucks. Alright. Potch and colour kind of thing. Offcuts. I mean, as soon as you're buying offcuts and discard, discard stuff, you're probably not going to expect to get a lot out of it. So 65 bucks is... I mean, you can't ask for a lot for 65 bucks anyway, so... I'm not that too too torn up about it, but yeah, not not gonna really get a lot out of sixty five bucks. <laughs> Colonel Pulitzer taught me how to spot synthetic. Uh, sort your videos by sold. I think we've got that sorted now. Boulder Opal off carts sold for nothing. So it seems like there's a lot of... I mean, I guess that makes sense. There's a lot of potch and off cuts. Some fairy opal. Oh no, so that one just ended but didn't actually sell. So what's not selling at all? Ah, uh, yeah. Winton Fairy Opal, especially if untreated and it just looks like it's like this porous sandstone kind of thing, it's probably pretty hard to get that to sell. Alright, oh. Yeah, it's a lot of really, really low grade stuff. There's some nice, nice doublets. Doublet rubs, so they haven't even finished them all the way off. Oh wow, this one got into a bit of bit of a bidding war. One and a half thousand carats of Minterby. Yeah, some of those stones look like they have a bit of something in them various sizes some rubbed some completely rough I know I wouldn't have been bidding quite that aggressively up to 500 plus but some people saw something oh this is nice so it's actually got a video so if you go through the video that'll probably say That'll probably convince a lot of people to go up. Opal Digger, good seller. Got videos and everything. Yeah, nah, that's, that's alright. This is probably going to be a pretty reliable seller. Wait a minute, Opal Digger? Isn't... I definitely haven't set this up, but I'm pretty sure Opal Digger and that profile picture I've seen in the Facebook group, so this may be a person that I've talked to in the past, just as a disclaimer. But whether it is or not, I like I like having this little... It doesn't take much to record a video, upload it to YouTube, and then just link it into your listing. And for Opal, a video does absolute wonders hasn't blown out any of the colors got a little ruler there looks like an old-school ruler too yeah no this might be one of the more reliable eBay eBay sellers people do bid with confidence too they're, they're really at $51 already with two days to go that's a that's a sign of some confident buyers maybe a lot of return customers that might be one that I save for, save for later. Not a lot of listings right now, but can't always have a thousand going. Am I missing da, 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 da. the kernel cuts, black opals, BODs, opals? All right. Oh, he cut some amazing stuff. Ah, uh, this is looking a lot. A lot like 
So chips, offcuts, beginner's stuff. Where are all the cut gems? Did cut gems not sell on eBay? Some people are buying these kind of blown out picture. 30 bucks isn't so bad though, is it? Oh. Huge gamble piece for a hundred. Yeah, I'm not a lot of not a lot of variety in just the search term of opal rough. That's interesting. So maybe a lot of beginners like to buy through. Yeah, a lot of beginners must like to buy through eBay. I guess it's if you're just getting into opal, you don't hear about other sites like opal auctions and the likes. These are things that I'm kind of interested in smart opals what was that lab created I mean none of those are great but for the price it's not that bad it's not Nick hoops kind of level but I do like seeing big big parcels of boulder rough Yeah, like something like this is not. That's not that bad for 200. I mean, you have to like buying rubs rather than getting that rub experience for yourself, but all in all, I mean, it's more reliable to buy this way, so at least you really know what you're getting. One with a ruler. Oh, see, wet and dry photos, always good. Always good to see some wet and dry photos. Especially for material prone to crazing, like Cooper Petey. With Boulder, not so much, but... Haven't seen that, so that's good to see. Couldn't you possibly switch over to US-based eBay? Probably. There's got to be a way, isn't there? There used to be. Why? What am I expecting to see in US, US eBay? Actually, let's just type in Opal. See if there's cut stones as well. Ah, oh, no, because we're just going to get flooded with, flooded with a lot of random stuff. Amazing Australian five question mark Opal. So, where is this seller? Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. 56 US. What's the conversion rate? Typically, I just double and then kind of pick a middle point between them and assume that it's about 75. I mean, I could probably confirm it as being an Australian Opal. It looks fairly Kubipedia ish. 56 US. Ignoring shipping, 56 US is probably actually a really half decent price for that. I mean, the cut I'm starting to see along this bottom edge, can I just blow up this picture? I can. So along this bottom edge, I am starting to see that the stone might not be perfectly shaped and finished. Might need to clip off a bit of the back edge prior to setting, but that's a that's a nice opal. 56 US. Australian opal in the US gets a bit of a premium markup, so that's for any of my US viewers at the moment, that's not really that bad. Looks like a nice stone. Of course that's an inches ruler, so that's yeah, that's a decent sized stone for 56 US. Oh, this could have a story. Oh, that's actually a sad story already. Rough and cut opals. It's like a deceased estate kind of sale.
Oh, I know Alan cut this, but the teardrop is not completely shaped. Which is what I was seeing with those edges. Try to describe it. This is... Unless I'm certain where the opal is from, I shouldn't put Australian in the title. So I've added the question marks. I apparently sold a bag of loose rocks as Australian and they turned out to be Mexican opal. I mean, this is a person that's really got very little idea of what they've got. They're just selling off their brother's collection because he's passed and basically just liquidating the collection, I guess. Majority are Australian, so I guess I'm selling as is. Oh, it's a bit sad that someone went went off at them for accidentally selling a parcel of Mexican opal. I mean, I'm guessing it was just some fire opal and they sold it as Australian in the title. I don't know. Please look carefully at photos. Thanks for looking at my listings. Oh. That's a... Yeah, see, is this one an Aussie opal? See, because this is... Oh... Uh, oh, I wish this one had a video. It's a weird looking stone. It's a very weird looking stone. Same description? Yeah, same description. Oh, that's a bit sad. What a what a downer. This is I mean some if I'm in the US I'll prob I would probably check each of these because Seems to be a person just trying to sell off their past brother's opal and really they're trying to be as honest as humanly possible. Which I think should be commended quite highly. Oh yeah. That looks very similar to one of the Mexican opals that I cut recently. Yeah, alright, that got real sad for me real quickly. Um, carrying on. So the US... Oh, I recognise that name, Opal Lovely. Now she is an Aussie-based seller. Yeah, Cougar Petey. What is this, some really sandy... Shell, that looks like Shell. Can't really say much about that listing. But Opal Lovely, I have... Oh, only 97. I thought she was quite a big-time seller. Maybe not. Maybe a new eBay account. Not sure why she comes up on the US one and not the Australian one so quickly. What is this? This looks like a mass, mass seller. The way they've already got like a background kind of set up. No ruler or anything though. They could make that adjustment. Just chuck a ruler at the bottom of it. Australian black fire opal. I mean, it's a calibrated cabochon with chips in the edges. Lots of chips. And the type of chips that I don't really see in Australian black fire opal, whatever that really means, I would be leaning towards this not being an Aussie opal. And probably lean fairly heavily to an Ethiopian opal that could have even potentially been smoked. See, this chipping, this looks like it was cut pretty roughly, pretty quickly. And that chipping... It's hard to explain, but if you cut a lot of stones, that chipping is pretty rare to see in Aussie opal. That looks like a high water content kind of opal. 
a really fragile kind of opal, like Ethiopian. Like Lightning Ridge doesn't do that. Lightning Ridge Dark Crystal, unless you're using like a 60 grit sintered wheel or something, that's, well not even sintered, like an electroplated wheel. <laughs> Speak up, I can actually bump up, oh, I, no, because if I bump up the microphone any further, I'm going to end up clipping. We'll just bump it up slightly. We'll bump it up slightly. I don't want to start sounding crackly though, more than I already am because it's so early in the morning. But yeah, I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know about this seller. Do they sell a lot of Australian opal? If I visit the store, oh, okay, they're just mass selling stones of all sorts. That that makes me lean even harder towards not being an Aussie opal. Aussie black opal, it's definitely got to be an Ethiopian chunk. Typically, someone selling decent quality Australian opal isn't selling every other stone under the sun. This looks like a mass, mass production, mass selling kind of, kind of thing going on here. So if I can get past all of those... Ethiopian plus contrast boosted. You can see, so this is probably a good one to look at as well. So the things I'm seeing here is that base tone, the uh, the patterns and the the shaping of the color color play, but also if you look at this these tweezers, look at how how much light there would be needed to make this halo around the outer edge, but also for the core here to be completely pitch black. So that is what happens when you contrast through the roof. So here you can see the tiny individual teeth of the tweezers just light up, but the rest is just pitch black. To create that naturally, just using a lamp or something, would be very unusual. So this is, see this is much much less. You can see the detail in the tweezers and everything. But here you've got some crazy contrast stuff going on. Apart from that, they're actually really nice photos. Like you can even see the scratch marks and stuff in the tweezers. So they might have even used a macro lens for that. But yeah, that first picture is a bit, bit tweaked heavier than the others. Oh, UK. Shout out to all the UK people. There's a new listing. I don't know, not a lot of colour. Oh. And then this is going to convert to US. Oh no. I don't know, is that just under 50, 50 Aussie dollars maybe? Maybe just over. Around 50 Aussie dollars. I hate being on a non-Australian eBay. Created black opal, beautiful. It's first first word they have in the title. That is what I would do too if I was creating opal. I'm not liking the US eBay listings as much as I was the Australian. So I think I'm going to go back. There seems to start being a lot more synthetic Synthetic and Ethiopian come up now. Fine, genuine 2.5, ultra colourful, sparkling white cabochon. So here's that coin thing again. I don't even know what kind of coin that is. Liberty coin. Is that a penny? Chippy, chippy bottom edge. On what they say in the description. Oh, it's a big description. I mean, the bottom part looks like it's just copy and paste. Um. 
Wow, this is a lot of words and not saying a lot. All right, I don't really want to go through reading all of that, but it doesn't seem to talk much about the item that I'm looking at. Yeah, all right, that one confuses me. Oh, look at this one. So are they, I'm assuming they're fingers with a fingerprint. So when you see this, just run, run for the hills. Like that's, hopefully they've got some better pictures without. See, even that, that's, I mean, I would, oh, every picture. Which makes me think they're doing it not on accident. That one's a bit better, but not much so. This one's a little bit better. As soon as you see skin that doesn't look like real skin, that's when you need to be a little bit worried. A dime. US, old US dime. Yeah, so this is extreme red fingers. You don't you don't wanna you don't wanna see that. This is extreme contrast, so you get a huge difference between a section where the light hits the finger or somewhere where there's not a lot of light. So you go from pitch black to bright white all within the same photo. And it will make the colours pop more, but you're just asking for trouble when it comes to feedback time. They the opal lands in their hands and they look at it and go, This is nothing like the picture that I bought. So if I were this seller, I would just kind of take it back a few notches and be a little bit more careful about how I represent the opal because this opal will be one of the most disappointing ones to land. Oh, and they've, they've listed a lot of them. This is an interesting way to list them. At least you can individually look at the ones that you're hunting for. And so the consistency of their photos is very different. Sometimes the contrast is max, sometimes the brightness is really lowered. Some of their photos aren't so bad. And then some of them are just insane. All right. more artificial stuff oh I don't have any green Peruvian opals wow 102 bucks is that larger than no sense of scale oh no What's happened? Interesting. Cut, shape, and color. Boulder, Opal Wholesalers, Queensland. So it's an Aussie seller. Description of Boulder. So 7.8, 16, 11, 6. Yeah, it is a bit of a chunky piece. Yeah, all right. A lot more Mexican opal I see in the US US side of things. Fire agate. Have I maxed out the opal? I do I really like the dendrite opal stuff. People laugh at it, but I think it forms some really cool patterns. Like look at that one. I've seen faces in them. They're a cool stone. Nancy. Bloody horse has just broken into the veggie garden. Oh no. Sell the horse. Buy some opal. Bloody horses. Alright, I'm not a huge fan of what's going on in the American. So the American eBay market seems to be a bit, a bit stranger. Now we looked at Opal Rough. What about Oh, 
some opal jewelry. This opal jewelry is selling well on eBay. A lot of this is not selling. That one sold. It's an interesting looking piece. Um, a lot is getting listed and not a lot is getting sold. Peru pink opal. Okay, not. Is this all the one seller? It seems to be a huge number of listings with very similar pictures. Triplet. Yeah, so maybe there's some mass sellers that are making it look like nothing's selling. And some triplet, triplet stuff. The boulder didn't sell. Oh, we got some sales now. Mainly triplet stuff. Triplet and synthetic when it comes to opal. It's a nice little stone though. Alright, so maybe jewelry is not what sells the best. Let's get rid of the completed items. Let's see what's the actual sale in terms of jewelry. I mean, it does seem to really, really have a strong market when it comes to triplets. I was hoping to see some... I guess I get spoiled. I see all of Steve's... Steve stuff and there's some really good jewelry makers, opal jewelry makers on Facebook, so I get spoiled a bit at what I can see. But here I'm seeing a lot of triplet. This is cool. I like this. I need to learn how to do that. That's an out of out of focus picture. So something like this is quite cool. It's just held in there. Kind of looks like a boot. I like this one. Does this seller have a lot of this kind of stuff? Oh, actually, just go back. See, I like some of this. This is like some inlay, some creative inlay stuff. <laughs> one review. Great, great buying experience. Thanks. One star. Don't know what happened there. See, I like creativity. This is like a geode with some opals chucked in the middle of it. The entire outside is coated in some sort of metal. I wish there was a shot of the back. I'm guessing the entire stone's like that. I like interesting things. And this guy's doing some interesting things. And it's not priced crazily. I might have to have a look at his store afterwards and see if I can pick up something weird. I think I'll leave him open. Yeah, so jewelry's not going great. That's mad, that boot looking one. Yeah, I like it. Um, what I want to look at, so something I've been looking at a lot is just for used lapidary equipment. Like used, run down. I want to do a series where I re rebuild some old, old machines, but I don't know if it's just COVID. I used to see cabbing machines and stuff on the likes of eBay and Gumtree. 
And now you really don't see much at all. Vintage faceting, I could convert that into something. But most of it, oh, I don't typically see them from Russia, but most of them I see in the United States. So the market for some of this equipment is getting really slim. A lot of it was just built really well and just lasts forever. It can be handed down generation to generation. So it's, yeah, it's kind of hard to get secondhand stuff because no one wants to get rid of it. It lasts for so long. You might replace the electric motor on it, but maybe some belts and stuff and the wheels, of course. But really, it holds together really well, so. Oh, we've got some burrs. We've got some burrs. Electroplated. I haven't even looked at things like scented burrs on here for a while. Oop. Hey, from China. Looks very similar to the set that I have been selling. Could be the same one. So approximately 56, another, oh. Yeah, I reckon it's made by the same factory. The problem is that I did once buy a set that looked it had these pictures and then it landed and it was not it was not this much it was about 30 Australian dollars so I thought it was too good to be true and it landed and it was in the right packaging and everything but these burrs weren't the burrs that were in there so instead of having burrs like the sinteds that I've got here they came out like the electroplated ones that I have over here so the mass pack which this one is 10 bucks worth or something but this might be the price is more reasonable so maybe I don't know I get a bit scared by it but I think that's probably the same same kind of kit so if I'm out of stock then this might be a reasonable seller It always does worry me when they seem to have the exact same picture and whenever they have the listing just pulled from someone else's thing so the photo quality's gotten worse and it does worry me a bit but that's also 60 Aussie plus another so it comes out to be about 70 similar price to what I do I don't know it's always a bit of a gamble I oh, know now I've closed it all Always a bit of a gamble, but if anyone tries it out, let me know how it goes. I've already had a couple tell me that it didn't go so well. Some wet stones. Alright, the scented burr market hasn't really completely taken off. So within Australia, there's no one selling them. Just a couple from China. Makes sense, that's where they're made most of the time. So, oh, yeah. What else should I look up? What else should I look up? In the US, I would see bunches of machine deals at local mineral club shows. Yeah, I have been wanting to get to a few things, but with the current global pandemic side of things, it's everything falls falls over. Nothing is quite working out, which is very disappointing. But I do have a couple projects sitting just over there that uh, will make it onto the channel at some point. And they're, they're still Opal related, but it is a lot of equipment manufacturing. So homemade cabbing machines and flat laps, a lot of that kind of stuff. And there'll be videos on how people can do it themselves. Oh, Nova Tips. Nova Tips. Someone wants me to search up for Nova Tips. Oh, probably come up more as Nova Points because, yeah, nah. Maybe I should start a eBay shop. I kind of want to only sell to viewers and stuff at the moment though, because I can't even keep stock at the moment. Yeah, all right. Nova points, Nova tips, not a thing for eBay. There are a couple miners that are selling on 
eBay, but typically a lot of them that I talk to don't want to sell their good stuff. So it's a lot of beginner's stuff. Just, I mean, a lot of them would just call it gravel, fish tank material. They don't want to sell anything too good because a lot of the a lot of them can't really capture it well enough with their cameras. I mean, these guys are pretty rough and rugged and in person they'll sell sell out the back of their truck, sell at the pub, that kind of thing. But yeah, they're not overly keen on eBay. They don't have Facebooks. Some of them have emails. Emails is a plus, but yeah, they're not they don't think they'll get the money that they should selling online. And that's why we've got people like Julian. So Julian Stavrius, if we wait a minute Brace yourselves for my ugly mug to take over the screen. Oh, which side is it? This side. So, Julian at Opal Empire and Jewelry. He is... The reason people like he exist is because he's a great middleman between the miners and us. Just general people. People that can't make it out to the mines that often. He'll leg it out there, spend a week there, just hitting up a whole heap of people. We cut some stones and stuff out there and yeah, manages to scoop up mass, mass bulk and then breaks it up in small parcels and sells it on. Max with the I don't trust Facebook sellers. I mean, there are some good, there are some good Facebook sellers. There are definitely some good Facebook sellers. So I wouldn't write them all off I wouldn't write them all off from the start. Let me scroll through. Julian's the best. For some material, I would have to I would have to agree. For I mean he goes out there all over the time. All over the time, that makes sense. He goes out there regularly and always lets me know if you've got something in mind and he's going out to Cooperpedia and you really want some like fossilized shell or something, just let him know and he'll just make sure he stocks up on that in particular. I've done that with him a few times. Just because I do love fossils. Oh, Riley Gunn, yep. Especially for Andamuka. I mean he's the he's the king of Andamuka material. Some of that stuff that he's got, he treats it beautifully and it comes up real good. So I do I do love Riley's stuff there. And he's actually sent me something very recently. It's just on my desk. I picked it up at the post office yesterday. And yeah, that will come up on the channel too. It's a pretty interesting, interesting piece. He's a great guy. Julian always seems to have some crazy bright stuff. I bought from him that... Brought from him that some of my best opal chips for doublets. Yeah, he does come across a lot of interesting material. I haven't bought chips from him before, but... And a Mooka Solid Matrix with recycled copper holder. I don't even know what that... Oh, it's like a wire wrap. It's not even that bad as though. It's treated well, that one. Well, yeah, I think I'm running out of steam now. I don't even know how long the stream's been going, but it's it's been fun. It's oh, actually, bail on the wrap up. We've got a Bellum Knight, million years old, six fifty, seventeen carats. It's not bad, but what's going on here? with these chips. What's going on there? I mean, it's got some imperfections along it, but... Uh, the fingers are turning a little bit red and there's a lot of black going into pure white. So maybe the colour doesn't look as good as it does there. Bump it back a few. I always man 
just mentally knock it back a few on the brightness and contrast as soon as you see things like this. So the colour of those fingers, this weird artefact here, the crisp sharp whiteness on the black. I could make an offer on that one. If there's one thing I love, even more than shell, is a nice bit of bell night. Yeah. Can you do a video on fossils? Which one's not to cut? So I've been communicating with the museum in the city because I've wanted to do a video on that exact topic. And they've got a display that shows, it kind of has kind of a fully cut shell opal on one end and then a raw shell opal on the other. And they show the transition between how much of the shell features you destroy over the cutting course of the cutting and how you decide where you kind of stop kind of thing so it's a really interesting display and i just haven't managed to strike a deal with them to do a bit of filming because i want to film it in there because i can't really take the display so yeah um do 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 how do i get a hold of julian so Opal Empire and Jewelry is his Facebook Facebook group. So that's the best way to get a hold of him. Uh, what else have I missed? How do you know if it's worth getting a parcel of opals on eBay? I mean, I think as long as the photo... As long as you can trust the photos and the seller enough... Like, we'll just have a look at this parcel here. This is probably a bad example because this is a person that actually sells a lot of opal. I recognise this listing. So you just want to be able to get a rough gauge of the size of each of the opals, so something like a ruler in it. You want to see that there's not any kind of weird artefacts from contrast or brightness bumping, which this one doesn't seem so bad. And for that you look at backgrounds, you look at fingers, if a finger looks like it's the colour of a finger, then you're all good. And yeah, really, in terms of price, that's really up to you and knowing that something is worth that kind of money or not. So there's not a huge science behind whether a parcel is worth it or not. It's just kind of a whole heap of factors that you balance and you get better with it. And always look at auctions. Cheap auctions, beautiful. You can score some amazing stuff for very little with a good auction rather than these buy it now or best offer kind of things. See you, Greg. Walk the dog. Did you take any for pictures? So I've... I think I've been overly cautious, but I don't like taking cameras into places like museums. I don't know if it's a reasonable thing to be a bit worried about, but I haven't taken any pictures or videos from within the museum just because I don't think I'm overly... I don't think I'm really allowed to. And I don't want to get in trouble. But I work I work on the same campus as the, uh, as the museum, so if I do ever get approval, I'll go straight in there and you'll see it straight away. What auction websites other than Opal Auctions? I mean, I want to do another one of these where I look at Etsy. I've never bought Opal from Etsy, but apparently Etsy has some stuff. eBay, that's really... There are a couple... So I've had a look at a couple auction houses that, are, that every now and then have deceased estates, estate sales. And there, some opal and collectibles and stuff can go for very cheap, which is also another good thing to look into. But if you're not in like a local area where opal is a big thing, that's that's tougher. But yeah, there'll be plenty of videos coming up, Max, on opal, opal fossil stuff because it is it is my favourite stuff. Cuvapedi fossilised opals are right up there, at the top. 
even just a tad above the boulder opal. Just a tad above the boulder opal. Yeah. Oh well, I think I'll call it quits. Call it quits there. We've had a look at eBay pretty pretty thoroughly. We've seen some stuff. Some good and some bad. It all in all, from a few years ago when I used to look at Opal on eBay, I don't see a lot changing, but there does seem to be a lot more potch, a lot more potch and colour. Some lower a lot of lower grade stuff. So for the higher grade stuff, definitely I'd be ditching eBay and going over to either Facebook or Opal Auctions. Opal Auctions, if you want, just guaranteed similar kind of layout and stuff. Whereas Facebook, you need to get in touch with people and know who to talk to, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, as soon as you start getting past the beginner stage, I think for beginner stage, you can just chuck a bid, try to be the only bidder in a low, low bid auction. And I mean, this one here, who knows, it's only got 11 hours left you put in the minimum bid, you'll probably win it. And it's it's enough stuff to practice on. You might end up with a few interesting stones there. And you'd probably have a good good chance of making back 50 bucks on a parcel like this. Just shape, shape up something and make a nice wire wrap pendant or something. Get some experience. Remake your money. Claim that back. I think that's all you can really hope for as a beginner. <laughs> Jeff's only just turned up. Uh, would you be able to identify an opal for me? Yeah, if you send me a message, email, any of that kind of stuff, either through Facebook or Roy's Rocks at well, Roy's dot rocks at yahoo dot com. My email address. Yeah, send through some pictures. I'm happy to always look at stuff. But yeah. No more questions. I'll catch you guys catch you guys later. I'll go back to carving. It's a Sunday. I've been streaming for probably over an hour now and it's not even eight o'clock in the morning yet, so Oh I need to have a coffee coffee cup. I'm armed and ready to go. But yeah. Thanks for dropping by everyone. I didn't even have a look at how many people rocked up or anything like that. But whoever did rock up Thank you, and yeah, I think you'll notice the camera hasn't run out of batteries or anything. I've got, I can't show you, but I've got like a power adapter and a cord and everything. So I'm actually thinking I can do some live carving videos with this setup as well. So hopefully in the near future, we can actually go through the whole process of carving up some opal. Carving, polishing, all of that. So should be able to get a stone done pretty quickly. But yeah, anyway, I'll call it quits here. Catch you guys in the next video.